Hey guys, so we're back and uh, this time we're going to cover org mode. So what I chose to do is I kind of chose to separate this episode into several smaller chunks. So this episode is going to be about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, essentially I'm going to cover kind of the basics, the basic syntax of org mode. So the file type and also talk about the, how to format stuff. And after that, we'll get to the more interesting stuff. So I'll cover, for example, org agenda in order to use task management and also the other kind of org export in order to generate PDFs uh, and all this kind of stuff. So uh, rather than doing, again, a very long 15 minute video, I chose to do it in this format. So this will be episode 5.1 and then we'll have a 5. something something until we, we reach the end of org mode. And it's going to be a very long ride. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to talk about Lisp on the next uh, on the next real numbered episode, and then we'll jump straight into the packages. So we'll get to the most uh, uh, interesting stuff again. But uh, regarding org mode, so essentially org mode is a is a major mode that corresponds to a file. So you notice that I have an, a file open which is called orgbasics.org. So org is essentially a file type that Emacs manages. Uh, through the major mode, which is called again org mode, and this major mode it provides some uh, some very nice uh, features, such as again kind of this syntax uh, highlighting. So this coloring, for example, is done by org mode, but uh, also outlining and other kind of uh, uh, features. For example, this is what we call kind of a section header, and this corresponds to an H1 header if you look at the HTML. So this is essentially kind of a top uh, a top header of my document. And then I can press tab on top of it to toggle and to kind of uh, show the contents of this. So essentially by default, this is going to be kind of hidden and then I can show it by pressing tab. So if I, if I go with tab, I can kind of cycle through the sections and subsections that exist inside. Now, I also have a, a second section, uh, which will rather, I will also have a subsection. And you notice the difference is that here I use one uh, kind of asterisk and here in here I use two. So I can keep going indefinitely. I can make, for example, a sub subsection just as an example. Now, once again, org is a file type and it is a major mode. So this major mode is what provides me with what we are seeing right now on the buffer. And this works very much like Markdown. So in fact, you can even write kind of your readmes for GitHub using uh, org mode. And uh, GitHub is nice enough that it recognizes this file type and it renders it as if it were Markdown. Now, uh, if I talk about some of the features, so the basic, the most basic thing that you can do in, the, in any kind of outlining tool is you can do lists. So they come in two types in org mode. You have the kind of un unordered lists, which are essentially the bulleted lists. So if I open this subsection, as an example, this is an unordered list. So uh, it's very simple coming up with them. So essentially for a bulleted list, you just use the plus sign and then you use this kind of syntax. Instead of, and instead of uh, if I want to add a new item to this list, for example, instead of pressing enter and then indenting and then pressing a plus, what I can do is I can, on any one of, the, uh, one of these items, I can press meta and then enter in order to automatically add a new item to this list. So this is an extra item, for example. Additionally, I can make kind of lists inside lists. So for example, if I press tab here without uh, without writing the full kind of item, I can indent this. So here I'm pressing tab and toggling where this is in the hierarchy. So this is a sub item. And what's very nice about org mode is that it, it's very dynamic. It allows you to reorganize things inside lists. So in, in fact, if I press the meta and then the up and down arrow keys, I can move items up and down. So for example, I'm moving unordered around and notice what happens if I bring it all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to bring it down and you notice that the, it uh, org mode is smart enough that he understood that this item in specific has a sub item. So the both of them, they moved together whenever I reorganize stuff. When I talk about org mode, I can also talk about the kind of uh, ordered lists. And this kind of list is essentially the same thing as this one, but it's an enumeration essentially. So items are going to be numbered. And in fact, if I look at this example, so this is an ordered list, I can add items the same way I did before. So I can use meta and then enter in order to add a new item. And notice that the numbering is done automatically. So I don't have to manually input a six here. It's org mode that's managing the numbering for me another 
item. And uh, notice once again that I can do the same thing I did before with moving stuff around. So if I take this another item and I start moving it up and down, you notice that it's moving, but the numbering is remaining the same. So in fact, I can reorganize stuff even in enumerations and this does not break the enumeration. This is also very handy. Now this is it about lists. Again, lists are, lists are very simple and also just before, uh, obviously lists, they also kind of can be indented. So notice that I can also have a sub enumeration or I can even have a regular list. So regular item and then another regular item. And notice that I can reorganize this so I can bring it up and down. Now, uh, the next thing that we'll be seeing is tables and the tables in org mode, they are very nice. So they are very dynamic and uh, I just removed a few things so that I can show you how they work. But essentially you define tables by using this kind of pipe character and then you kind of separate the different columns using it. So notice I have a column for inputs and a column for outputs as an example. And what I can do is, for example, I can use the tab key inside of this table to move. So if I press tab, I get jumped to the next cell. And if I press shift tab, I go backwards cell by cell. And uh, if I enter insert mode, I can also, let's say that I enter insert mode here. I can also tab in order to go to the next cell. So now let's try inputting a number. Let's say that I put a very large number. And notice that when I tabbed, I also auto resized the table. So this is one thing that org does by default. And if I copy this item, paste it here again, I also resize it on the other side. Now, what's nice is that I can also add kind of delimiters to tables. So usually what you have on a table is you have a, a header and then you have the body of the table separated from it by a line. So I can do this very easily in org mode by adding a line just below. The line should start with the pipe and then I can put in a, a dash and press tab and this expands to kind of become a delimiter. So then I can copy and paste this if I want. And the tables in org mode, they require an episode by themselves. This is just a basic syntax, but later you can define kind of a uh, special commands and you can even use list function, list functions in order to treat this as if this were a spreadsheet, for example, but we'll, we'll see all about that later. I can also define kind of special styling. So for my, for the words, for the text that I use, for example, I can define a word to be in bold face by using the asterisk. So if I wrap a word inside asterisk, you notice that I get this kind of bold effect. And this also shows on my buffer. I can do italic similarly by using the, the forward slash. So this is italic. Underlined is done by the underscore. So this is underlined. Verbatim is done with the equal sign. So verbatim around the word. And finally, strike through is using is done using the plus sign. So this is strike through. These are some of the nice styling options. Obviously, if you are thinking of exporting your document, you if you export to LaTeX or to HTML. So, for example, if I were to ex export the bold face to LaTeX, it would accordingly become a word inside of the text bold face text BF function. This is styling. And then another very cool feature of uh, links that we'll get to use more in uh, future episodes is the cap capacity to use links. So in fact, I can link to anything. I can link to a file, for example. You notice that if I mouse over, I get this kind of a tooltip that says that this is a file on my home folder. So this is my .emx. If I click on it, I get to the, uh, to the kind of file. I can also press Control Shift, Control O in order to open this the same way that I did by clicking. And the same can be done for a web page. So here I am linking to my GitHub. If I press Control C, Control O, I do need to wait a few seconds because uh, this virtual machine has one gig of RAM and it's going to take a few seconds for it to open Firefox, but just give it a second. You'll notice that it's opening up and this is going to link me to my GitHub page, which is what I, I defined here on the link. So these are my repos and stuff. I can also link to images and linking to images is very interesting because Emacs is capable of displaying images inside inside the buffer. So for example, if I kind of, um, if I kind of delete uh, backspace here from the bottom, I do need to go a bit further back. Uh, you'll notice that in fact, the link is nothing more than kind of a set of square brackets. I'm going to put this space here just so that it doesn't collapse. 
but the link to an image is essentially kind of a this. So it's a, it's a path in my file system again. So it's pointing to home void pictures emacs. And this is the same rule for the other ones, except that the other ones, they have kind of a description. So in fact, if I go to the back here and I start removing, you notice that I get the same thing, but I also get a second pair of square brackets. And this corresponds to the description. So in fact, this is kind of a link with a description and an image is just a, a link to an image without a description. So just two pairs of square brackets. And what's interesting is that Emacs is capable of displaying this on the buffer. So in fact, I can toggle the behavior of displaying images by using meta and then X and using the command org org toggle inline images. And notice that this opens up. So the Emacs logo again, that was that this was pointing to. I'm going to toggle that back. And there are other ways to have this behavior. So I can change my configuration file as well. I'll show that later. And I can also issue a kind of a control sequence on top of the header of my org file. This is also something that we'll see later. Now for images and links, that's it. And the last thing that's very nice that you can do, do with the uh, org mode is you can manage source code. And uh, this is very interesting because uh, you notice that you have this kind of environment where you define source code. And in order to, uh, to kind of uh, generate this environment, I can simply press uh, the, the last end sign and then S and press tab. And this is a little macro that generates the environment. And then whatever I type here is going to be the language. So for example, Python or Emacs Lisp or Bash. I'm going to show later how you can add kind of languages because by default you can only execute Emacs Lisp, but there are ways in which you can, for example, execute the code that's inside of here using your machine and then have the results appear uh, right after. If I show this example, uh, this example with Emacs Lisp, so this is a, just a little Lisp expression that essentially prints this message. So message is a function that's defined in Emacs Lisp and it prints stuff to the echo area down here. And essentially I am feeding message this variable, which is called message to print. So right above, I use the let statement in order to define the scope where the variable is, um, is defined. And we'll kind of uh, talk about Lisp in more, uh, in more details later. But as of right now, just know that this statement essentially defines this variable, which is message to print to be equal to the string of characters, hello you too. So I can execute this code by being inside of, the, of this little environment and pressing control C, control C. And then you notice that it's asking me if I want to execute this Emacs Lisp code. I say yes. And notice that I get again printed hello YouTube. So for example, I can change this to hello world, re-execute, and it's going to change the results accordingly. Additionally, I can also kind of edit this code inside of the bug of the mode that corresponds to Lisp. So for example, I can press Ctrl C and then the single quote, and this opens up an auxiliary buffer. And this buffer, it is not in org mode, but it is in the Emacs Lisp mode, which means that I have the Emacs Lisp uh, kind of indentation rules, and also means that I have the Emacs Lisp kind of key bindings. So for example, one such key binding is Control X, Control E, which allows me to evaluate the last expression. So notice that I press this, and then I am evaluating all of this let statement, and you notice that what I get down here is hello world. So this function, it printed hello world, to kind of the bottom again of my Emacs uh, kind of echo area. And with regards again to, uh, to basic syntax, I think that this is a good enough introduction. And for the next episodes, we'll be kind of taking a look again at the more advanced aspects. So we'll, I'll, I'll be seeing you guys next time. So thank you very much, guys. I'll see you next time.